So I've now set the model in the plaster recess in the ring. I'm applying three layers of soft soap to act as a release agent when we pour the plaster material on top of this model to make the mold. Initially, you can be quite liberal with the soft soap. Make sure it saturates the entire model surface and the rest of the plaster ring. You want to make sure that there are no surfaces without soft soap, otherwise the mold could stick. So initially you can put on a good amount of the soft soap and as you layer up, you can squeeze out your sponge and just make sure you remove all of the suds from the surface as these can create little defects in, in, your, in your mold surface if, if there are still bubbles from the soap. So your last sweep of the soft soap should remove um, the majority of the wet area and, and any suds on the model. The surface should look wet to touch and it doesn't need to be dry. The next process is to locate the, the frame onto the ring. So these are the two aluminium parts of the mold case. It's really important to make sure there's no debris on either of the two surfaces that meet. So you could see that I was just sweeping off any plaster from the, the two meeting points where the metal touches. I'm now applying a liberal amount of Vaseline to the internal surface of the frame. As the plaster sets, it expands in the frame. Um, so this Vaseline will allow it to drop out easier. Make sure there are no big lumps of Vaseline left, um, but, but you can, there, there can be a thickness to this surface. You can see here, I'm just scraping off any, any debris that, that might prevent these two surfaces from meeting. So give it a little twist just to check there's no debris clamped in between the surfaces and it, make sure it's locked together. The next step is to mix plaster um, to about double cream thickness and then pour it in. Be careful when you pour it in that you pour it down the side of the frame um, and be careful not to pour it in too quickly otherwise you could lift the model off the surface of, of the ring and you'll lose it inside this um, volume of plaster. So I just put my finger down there in the top of the model just to check the thickness, which should be about an inch and a half off the model. And now I'm running my fingers round the outside of the frame just and, and agitating the surface just to release any air bubbles off the, off the inside of the mold and the model. There's a quite a time sensitive part to this process at this stage. You need to wait just until the, the plaster in the mold starts to warm um, and catch it before it begins to fully expand. So as the, as the plaster starts to set, I'm adding this metal plate and then a threaded bar um, that I'm clamping down onto the collar of the frame. Once the mass of plaster starts to heat up, I turn the threaded bar down onto this plate, which forces the frame off the, off the plaster mass and you can lift it off. And it's as easy as that. If you wait too long and the plaster starts to set too much, it can expand in the frame and get stuck. You want to leave it about 
an hour before you lift off the plaster mold from the model um, and then leave the mold to dry. You can see there's a ledge on the outside of the plaster mold um, and this sits in the cup on the Jigger Jolly and holds it in, in a central position. So now we have the negative shape of the plaster pattern um, inside this mold. And once the mold's dry, we drop it into the, to the cup on the Jigger Jolly and we get the template for the inside surface. The cutting tool is the inside profile of the shape that we're producing and it presses into the mold and the cavity in between the wall. This, this cavity in between the cutting tool and the mold is filled with clay and any excess um, is pushed out of the top of the mold. So I'm bringing down the arm of the Jigger Jolly over the top of the mold and I'm gonna offer up the cutting tool by eye So you can see I'm leaving a very small cavity in between the cutting tool and the surface of the mold, which will be filled with clay. And, and I'm going to clamp the cutting tool to the arm of the Jigger Jolly. So I'm aligning the tool and the mould in, in a fairly manual way and I'll produce a prototype and if I decide that it's too thin or too thick I'll adjust, adjust the cutting tool as appropriate and then once I get the right section thickness I might find a more permanent means of holding down the tool probably by bolting the tool to the arm of the Jigger Jolly especially if you're doing a large production run. So I've raised the arm of the jolly, lifted the mould out, and the next thing is to drop a ball of clay into the mould. Initially, I'll just judge the amount of clay that I drop in, but I'll weigh it before I drop it in. And depending on whether there's excess or not enough, I'll adjust as appropriate until I know the exact amount to put in every time to reduce my wastage. It's really important that you smooth out the ball of clay so there are no veins in the outside of it because these veins can transfer to the outside and, and become imprinted in against the, uh, the internal surface of the mold. So I smooth out this ball and then throw it into the bottom of the mold with a fair bit of force so that the clay is pushed into the foot of the model and the, in, in the small cavity in the bottom. I give the ball a very small spray just to reduce any friction as the cutting tool comes down to press it. So I'm going to slowly bring the tool down. You can see there's a bolt that the arm of the Jigger Jolly is, is getting closer to on the, on the machine. And this bolt is dictating how far the cutting tool can drop into the mould. It's really important to continuously remove any excess clay that comes out as you press. Because if you don't remove this, it can get caught and rub against the clay model that's being produced and rip the rim off. Again I give it a small spray just to reduce any friction I'll do a final pass just to make sure the surface of the internal 
the internal surface is nice and, and smooth. There are no smear marks left on the inside of the cast. You can see a little smear mark there, so I'm just going to give it one more subtle spray and give it one more pass with the tool. The next thing to do is use a small potter's knife to trim the edge of the pressing just to separate the form from the excess that's spilling out the side. And this will make sure when it dries, it releases off the walls of the mold evenly. You can see that the mould revolves anti-clockwise and clay is forced in an anti-clockwise motion almost into the back of the cutting tool. So there's a perspex front to this tool and an MDF back. The perspex front does the finishing, the sort of final cut of the form. And the MDF almost funnels the clay into this cavity um, so that takes the brunt of the clay and the brunt of the wearing you can see um, in the profile of this tool that the M there's a chamfer on the mdf and that really allows the clay to be forced into a thinner and thinner section and then by the time it hits the perspex it just finishes um, and creates that final that final surface finish so if you get it right, your tool should last quite a long time because the perspex doesn't really get worn down because the MDF takes the brunt of the pressure. The object should release from the mold in about six to 12 hours. And you can see as it's lifted out of the mold that the external surface takes the shape of the, the plaster mould and the internal surface is the profile of the cutting tool.